I'm John, um, so I've got a barber shop in Paranporth. This is Lola, my little Patterdale Terrier. It was a Tuesday afternoon, quite a warm sunny day outside, a lot of tourists about. Uh, I have the front doors open and Lola always sits outside the front of the shop or comes in and sits on customers knees. I was just shaving somebody's head, um, a number one cut, so two minute cut and I just noticed out the corner of my eye that Lola had gone. So I walked to the corner, still no sight. Um, I've got my other barber to take over and continue cutting that, that guy's hair. Uh, and I went and had a walk around the block and we searched the whole of Perrinport for, for hours um, and nothing, and not one sighting. Um, and I sort of knew at that point that she'd been stolen. I was heartbroken. Um, She's such an innocent little dog, you know, happy, friendly. So at that point we rang the police. We reported her as as, as, as stolen. I got told that I would be contacted by by an officer, and it was Leanne who contacted me. Um, and she was amazing. We managed to, to get hold of some CCTV footage from a, a, a local pub um, who we actually saw the guy carrying her across the car park, putting her into a motorhome and driving off. When I, when I saw that, I was angry because um, I thought somebody's intentionally taken her. Um, and how dare they? I haven't got any kids or anything, but you know, she is my little rock. Um, she comes everywhere with me. Um, she's been through lockdown with me and breakups and you know the, the works. She's always been there. As soon as, soon as we knew that she'd been stolen, um, it was very easy then to to get a following. Um, we shared descriptions. I shared number plates, um, and we made it nationwide. Um, within about 24 hours we'd had about 10,000 shares on the post. You know, two, three days in I thought we were not going to get her back here. Um, I, I'd given up hope a little bit but I still was driving around Cornwall looking for the vehicles. They told me it was Essex Police and um, they said that they'd got little Lola and she was safe and happy, yeah, over the moon. Um, I'd given up hope and suddenly for, you know, to, to see her and to get a little reaction and see her tail wagging again and all that guilt went out from my head, you know, it was, uh, no, it, was a, it was a nice moment. I wouldn't expect every police officer to go to the extent that she did. Um, but I'm happy that she did, you know, she, she really made Lola a priority, um, which I think we need to do, um, you know, dog theft is a horrible thing, it does affect people. This is still a very, very rare crime, so on average over the last five years there's been 70 crimes per year in the whole of Devon and Cornwall, but that said, the impact on the individuals is huge. Um, we have a really strong working relationship with all the other forces across the country. We share intelligence. We all collectively understand the impact of this. Dogs are not just property, so they're not the same as having a phone stolen uh, under a theft act. Um, there's more to it. There's an emotional connection. Uh, they're a member of people's families. And actually the question that needs to be uh, considered is, is the does the legislation reflect that? 